tribe of North American Indians lived east of the Rocky Mountains on the Great Plains through which flows the Mississippi. On this grassy country lived great herds of bison or buffalo, which the Sioux followed and hunted for food, shelter, and clothing. Wild horses, too, roamed the plains. Spanish explorers brought horses to America, and some escaped and multiplied. The Indians soon learnt to capture and train them, and as they followed the buffalo, they used horses to drag their possessions on a device called a travois. On their reservations today, the older folks still live as the Sioux did when the white men first came. From the skin of the buffalo, they made tent covers and clothing. After the skin had been pegged to the ground for some weeks to loosen the hair, it was turned and the hair scraped off with a tool of wood and stone. To soften it, the skin was pounded with a stone and then pulled to and fro over a length of rawhide. Buffalo skins were made into covers for teepees, as the Sioux called their tents. The cover was lashed tight and flaps set so that air would circulate through the teepee. The skins also provided warm clothing. They were sewn together with thread made from the sinews of buffalo muscle. A sharp bone awl was used to pierce the skin and often the clothing was brightly embroidered with glass beads. The beads were obtained from white fur traders. Before they came, the Sioux used the quills of the porcupine to decorate their coats. The quills were dyed in bright colors with plant juices and minerals. Before they could use the quills, the women had to soften and flatten them by pulling them through their teeth. The Sioux used almost every part of the buffalo. Spoons were made out of the horns, and the back of the head made an excellent bow. After a buffalo hunt, the meat was cut apart and shared equally amongst the families. Then the women gathered fuel for a fire and this was started by spinning wood against wood. None of the buffalo flesh was wasted. The intestines were considered a special delicacy. Sometimes the Sioux used the stomach of a freshly killed buffalo as a pot for boiling meat. Hot stones from a nearby fire were put in to make the water boil. Quickly the meat was added with bits of wild turnip as seasoning. Soon, the Indian had boiled meat, a nourishing soup, and a well-cooked buffalo stomach for dessert. The Sioux learned to preserve some of the meat by drying it. First, it was carefully cut into wide, thin slices. Then it was hung up in the sun to dry. This is called jerking the meat.
When it had dried to a golden brown, the dirt meat was made into pemmican by pounding it almost to a powder. Pemmican is one of the most nourishing foods in the world, and as it keeps well and is easy to carry, the wandering Sioux preserved much of their meat in this way. To keep the pemmican from spoiling, oily marrow from split bones was added. Then it was shaped into balls and stored away. The Sioux obtained food from many kinds of wild plants. The buffalo berry bush provided fruit which was also preserved for the long winter months. The pounded berries were mixed with flour and made into patties which were thoroughly dried. Women dug up wild turnips for use in soup or with cooked meat. They were boiled to keep them tender and then joined together in long strips. Leather bags were used to store them away for the winter. Sometimes the Sioux stayed in one place long enough to raise a crop of maize or Indian corn. They roasted and ate some of the fresh corn cobs, but preserved most of them by boiling and drying them in the sun. Pumpkins were grown as well. The pumpkins were cut in half and the seeds scraped out. Then they were boiled and cut into long spiral ribbons which were hung up to dry. This was the life of the Sioux. They roamed the plains following herds of buffalo. The buffalo provided them with shelter and clothing and food. They learned to preserve meat and vegetables and fruit for the winter months. Thus, a once primitive people adapted themselves to the surroundings in which they lived. 